the second to last thing I'll cover for today, um, well, maybe maybe the last thing we'll see, uh, is how to add device into our app. So first things first, I'm going to, uh, if I don't have this one line, this line two over here, and I go to the root page, I get this basic landing page that says, yay, you're on Rails. It's cute, but I want to, uh, whenever I make a request to the home page, I want to actually go to all of the breweries instead. So if I uncommenting that line, refreshing, I get all of the breweries showing up over here. Now, you shouldn't be able to access my site unless you're logged in. That's generally how most websites work. So I'm going to just run through more or less uh, the setup for device. Let's jump back over to my gem file, make sure that I have device in here, which I do not. Let's put that in. So gem device, I kill the server, bundle install. All right, so I'm going to run a few commands. Let me grab that curriculum from Tuesday. Tuesday. All right, first things first, I'm going to run, uh, I'm going to add that to the gem file. I'm going to run this command, bundle exec rails g device install. So I've got the gem, but I'm going to install everything in here at this particular point. There's a few things manually I have to add. So inside of development.rb, I have to add this line of code. Somewhere inside of here, I'm just going to add this line of code. All right, uh, what else do we have? What else do they want me to do? I have this already. I'm going to add these flash messages inside of my application layout. So application.html.erb. Right inside the body here, I'm going to add these two lines of code in. And then, okay, that's fine. All right, so you'll notice under db, I'm going to close all these windows. Under DB and migrate, we have a new. I have to create a user. So I installed it. Now I'm going to extend it to a class called user. So it's going to create a new uh, migration for me called users. And it's going to create a user. Every school user will have an email and an encrypted password. We could add that name stuff, but for now we're just going to create a very simple. Every single user has an email and an encrypted password. It also created a model for us called user. And it has all of these extra things that the device is going to extend. So we can authenticate them using the database. They, we can register them. We can recover them, remember them, track them, validate them. Like all of these things are available for us. Um, I'm going to add in a quick nav bar into my application layout under app views, layouts, application, inside the body, but out on, but before the yield, I'm going to add this particular bit of code. It's basically current user is a method that's given to us for free from, from, uh, from device. Uh, current user is a method given to us for free from device. Um, we don't have a name. Uh, Hello, maybe we'll have, I believe it's email, so we'll just do email for now. Hit current user, greet them, have a log out, log in, and register if they're not logged in. If all goes well, an S over here. And before anything happens, so I've ran to a few things. First things first, I added my gem file, uh, the device gem. I installed it into my application. I created a user that's going to be basically an extension off of the device. Before anything happens, I want to basically make sure that they're logged in. So I'm going to do inside of application controller, and that's the first controller that's loaded. I'm going to create a before action called authorize user with a bang. Authorize user is also a built in method given to us from device, basically saying, like, before anything happens, make sure that they're logged in. So if all goes well, build the server, run it one more time. Refresh the page. Migrations are pending. Oops. 
I added the migration. It did not migrate it into the database. So I'm going to migrate it. And when I say I, I created a migration, it didn't migrate it. It's basically the concept of I had a database that already existed. I wanted to add a new table, but I did not add that table in. So when I migrate my new stuff in, I'm basically executing, uh, I'm, I was, I'm executing this particular script so that it enters the database. So I migrated it over, created a new, new table called device users. Refresh the page. And if all goes well, undefined method authorize user, authenticate user. That is what I meant. Thank you. Refresh the page. All right. So I can't even I can't even do anything right now because I haven't actually registered or signed in. So I need to register. I will do John at code.com. Six character password, sign up, and now I can move around. So now I can still see all of the um, all of the different breweries, all the beers that I created a little bit earlier. If I log out, I can't do anything. I can't even go to slash breweries because it'll automatically redirect me. That's that power of this one tiny little line before action authenticate user. Before anybody's allowed to do anything on my website, you have to they have to authenticate themselves. And that's as simple as logging and logging out needs to be. Now I did promise trying to be able to send emails. Now I can't prompt like this won't actually send emails, but it can it will mimic sending emails. So there's a gem called letter opener, which will like open it in uh, in the browser and pretend that it's actually there. So it seems to be fairly simple. Just grab this, add it inside your gem file. Add this inside development.rb. And I think we're all set there. So let's say that, uh, let me log in. Before I do anything, let me bundle install. Hold the server one more time. When should an email be fired off? After I register or after something is created. For the sake of simplicity, let's say after something is created. Okay. Um, John at code.com, six character password, and I'm in. Let's say whenever I create a new beer under a brewery, it'll send me an email saying, hey, just letting you know that you created this beer in this particular brewery. Just the way that we, the same way that we do MVC model view controller, where the controller goes to a view, it's the same thing. A controller hits a mailer, which hits a view. And it's just one extra step right in the middle. Um, I'm going to generate one particular, I'm going to run the generator. So bundle exec, Rails generate mailer. We have generate model, generate controller. I'm going to call this uh, new beer mailer. It creates two things. One is a new beer, beer mailer under the mailers folder, and then a new view uh, called new beer mailer. Load this up. This is the concept of microservices at this point, point in service objects. So I'm glad that we're doing this. I'm going to create a new, new folder called services. So the controller, let's jump into beers. Whenever something is created, I want to fire off an email. So instead of writing all the code inside of here that says like, get all this information, create an email and send it off. I'm going to create a service object called send email to admin dot new uh, with uh, I don't know, probably, we probably need uh, the beer itself, um, the current user, like of who created it. And then uh, I think that's, I think that's pretty much all that we need. And then dot call. 
this is a service object. Instead of writing all the code inside the controller, I'm just going to create a class and then just call the class. So I have a new folder called services, and I'm going to create a file called send email to admin.rb. Send email to admin. It's a Poro, plain old Ruby object. It takes in two methods, def initialize with the information that it needs, and then def call. So it takes in three things, beer, uh, two things, beer and the current user. So beer and then the current user, I'll make that beer equal beer, that current user equal current user, matter reader beer, Sure. The call is going to be the, is the thing that changes a little bit. So when we jump inside of mailers, there's a new beer mailer which inherits from application mailer. I'm going to, there's a, this concept of default from, and I'm, I'll send this out like where I'm getting this information. So it's like, this is the default email address where it's coming from. So let's just do john at codeplatoon.org. This is where the default for all the, like what every single email is going to be coming from. And all I'm going to do is create a uh, notify admin with, um, it is also going to take in a beer and a user. At user equals user, at beer equals beer. Mail uh, to, I don't know, uh, john at email.com. Subject, a new beer was created. All I'm going to do is new beer mailer dot notify admin with beer user and then dot deliver now. At this point, all I'm going to do is create a new view under new beer mailer called notify admin html.erb. And I'm just going to say h1, a new beer was created. And then I'll just do some basic information. Um, h2 name was at beer.name. Um, and then I'll just, just for the sake of time, H2 created by um, uh, at user.email. So let's start all the way from the beginning. Uh, inside the beers controller, I created a service object called send email to admin because I don't want the beer controller to also be in charge of sending over email. Um, so I passed this off to send email to admin. I passed in the things that it needed to know, which is beer and the current user. And then when I do that call, it's gonna fire off this mailer, which is found underneath the mailers. I default like who I'm gonna be sending it from. And then there's a email called, the, a method called notify admin. Notify admin's the name of the email that I'm gonna be sending out. It takes in two arguments, the beer and the user, and it's gonna send mail to john at email.com where the subject of a new beer was created. And it's similar to like a controller, like the new goes to the new .html.erb. The notify admin mailer also goes to new beer mailer, um, go to notify admin.html.erb. And basically it says beer was created, created by this person. So let's refresh. Create an, I don't want to create a new brewery. I'm going to go here, all beers, create a new beer. Uh, oh, crap. I, I didn't test this one out. Um, beer. Beer Street. Uh, I, I created a brewery, not a beer. Uh, shoot. Hold on. Let's, let's just move this. Let's move this to the brewery controller.
parentheses. Refresh, back, create a new brewery. Brewery is um, Wood Platoon 73 West Monroe. My phone number, create the brewery. Uh, uninitialized constant, Google is send email admin. I need to refresh the server. Try one more time. All right, create a new brewery, whatever, whatever, and whatever. Create this brewery. It'll undefined local variable user uh, to send email. So I have one issue. User is nothing. I, I, I know, but what's going on here? So this is blowing up on send email to admin on the call. I, do I have current user? I should. Send email to admin. Current user. Oh, it's because this. Here it is. Last time. Right, the brewery. There's no beer name. It is brewery. Last time, this is guaranteed to work this time. <laughs> Create the brewery, and there's like, it's, it simulates the, uh, the actual email being sent through. From this, a new brewery is created, it's this thing, to this particular person, and then you HTML the, uh, the email that would have actually gone out. So, I mean, how long did that take? Like, I started at four o'clock and I covered device and, and emails during that particular bit of time. All right, with that, let me show you the assessment. I'm gonna, and I'm also gonna release it. All right, so assessment four um, is worth more than the previous assessments. You have one retake. I'm gonna delete all the branches so you can <coughs> see all the old ones. You have until Monday and turn it in. The way that it works is we're gonna rebuild out <coughs> Craigslist Junior. So you can take a look at the rubric that I've got over here. Basically, I'm just saying, can you design a schema using active record migrations? Can you do validations and the associations like we did in the model earlier today? Can we fully implement CRUD and some uh, uh, error pages? I've argued with somebody before who really wanted to use Scaffold and I told him that he couldn't because if he did, he would have to explain everything to me, including what CoffeeScript is and why, it's, why it was generated. And he said, yeah, but it would just work. So I was like, no, it's not the way that things work. The two people who did that both did not find jobs in, in development. <laughs> One of them did not graduate from Code Platoon, and the other one is uh, working as like a implementation consultant. And that's totally fine. He said he didn't want to do the software afterwards, and that's that's okay. But for us, I'm going to assume everyone wants to be a software developer. You cannot use Scaffold for this assessment, and I know very quickly if you do. Um, it'll take you more time, like Josh said, to, honestly, to delete everything than it will just to be rewriting it yourself. So everyone likes going to Craigslist. You find interesting people and interesting items, though the people thing does not exist anymore because of uh, human trafficking uh, laws. So they took that away, which is a good thing. Um, Craigslist doesn't upgrade itself to stay up to date with the times. It's like the same interface that you used when you were 12 is the same one that they're, that they're at now. We're just gonna be building a Craigslist Junior uh, app because it's just a small little bit of functionality. Craigslist is honestly just a giant crud app. It's like the easiest thing. It's web like 0 0.5 and it hasn't changed. It's hugely popular. Um, so you're gonna have two models. You're gonna have a post and you have a category. The category is something like apartment rentals or auto parts. Which one belongs to the other one? Take a guess. Does a post have many categories? Does a post belong to a category? Does a category have many posts? Or does a category belong to a post? Should be fairly simple in your head. Like one of those clearly uh, works and one of them does not make sense. So first design your schema and your routes. 
create the migration files, go through all the models. Uh, I'm going to take this off. You don't need to TDD it. I will give you bonus points if you do TDD it. Um, so I'll, I'll change this, or Josh, can you change this right now? Change what? Uh, so that it just say like, TDD. yeah, let's change this so it says like CRUD. Uh, yeah, let's do release three uh, CRUD posts and then release four CRUD categories. We'll just change those real quick. And then we're gonna write all the code to make this happen. It's a nested CRUD app. No authentication unless you want to. So it's just, can you create a post? Can you create a category? And it has to be nested. So it's gonna be slash posts slash one slash categories, or maybe it's slash categories slash one slash posts. It's up to you. And the posts do not need to be tied to a user? No, we're not gonna do that, unless you want to. That the next the next assessment, which is next week, is extraordinarily difficult. It includes logging in, logging out, third party <coughs> APIs, and yeah, it's fun. We're gonna have a week to go. What's that? We're gonna have a week to go. Uh, you will also uh, so also coming up is your individual project. Um, that's going to be occurring during the week that we have off. There are cash prizes for the person who gets voted best of show. And uh, it's only 15 bucks. Uh, it's best of show. And uh, it's, it's also not cash, it's Amazon gift cards because we can't hand up cash. Um, but we find that people are generally more receptive when there is a cash prize waiting for them at the end. It's gonna be, you're gonna have two categories, best of show and most technically challenging. You all will vote for that. You can't vote for yourself. So, so you have until Monday to do this one. It's literally just a nested credit. Worst comes to worst, just follow the, the video that we just went over. Come in tomorrow, we can give you a hand if you need it. Um, yeah, please don't open a pull request until Monday. Uh, that's all I've got. Any questions on anything? <laughs>